everyone and welcome to Talk Together. Thank you very much for joining us this evening. We're going to have an evening of talking about the dungeons and the dragons. I am your host, not David Shears, Natalie Winter, and I will be chatting to, not Natalie Winter, Niall Isak. Hey. Hello, Niall, give us a wave. <laughs> it's a me. Hello. It's a, it's a you. It's a me, a Niall. A Niall. You all know the format by now, or maybe you don't. Hello, if you're new, welcome, come join us, pull up a seat, and we'll be going through some enticing questions and adventurous anecdotes all to do with D&D and TTRPGs. And what questions you ask? Well, the dice are going to decide the die. This, this is the point, we have, we, have, we have the lovely roll the dice uh, emoji in chat, but it's not grammatically accurate, but that's okay because it sounds better. So, for you grammar roll, pedants. Roll that die. Roll that it dice. Fit as well. Yeah, no, yeah. I Roll that it. D20. No. <laughs> anyway, already uh, we, we've gone off off tangent, but it's fine. Before we kick off, though, we need to do the important stuff. This stream will run for about an hour. We're delighted to be sponsored by Hero Forge, Ultra Pro, and Elderwood Academy. Thank you very much, all. And we are supported by D&D Beyond, Warriors of Waterdeep, and Level Up Dice. If you want to find us on the social medias, if you're a social person and like media, we are Roll Together RPG across not all of them. I think we're not on the Snapchat, but uh, but we're on the important ones anyway. Roll Together RPG. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> as a collective. We all have a collective we're not... <laughs> Every time you go through a picture, it's just a different <laughs> member of the cast. It's one of the dice heads. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we are categorically, categorically not on Grinder. I, I think I feel like I legally have to say that. <laughs> not yet. Now I might have yet. some fun. And... <laughs> but you know where we are now. We we are on Patreon, and a big thank you to our D Twenty Club for all of their support on Patreon. Our shows are available as podcasts. Just search for Roll Together RPG on your favorite podcasting app and you can listen along. Maybe you're listening right now, in which case, uh, hello, you. You, you oh. cannot see our beautiful faces, but that's okay. We have our beautiful voices instead. Yes. And before we... Fields. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, this is going to be chaos. Um, Sorry, we... yeah. It's okay. <laughs> Who thought this Nobody was a good idea? You, Nobody warned you. I mean, we played together, but then it was like, Ooh, let Niall talk for a bit. Ooh. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, well, uh, and, and me as well. I feel like this is, yeah. Anyway, um, well, this is your second time on Talk Together, Niall. I think you're the first one that is having a second go. Oh, my gosh. So special. I feel so special. I'm the special <laughs> one. I'm the chosen one. Harry Potter and one. Anakin Skywalker can get in the fucking bin. <laughs> <laughs> it's me, bitches. <laughs> You're here. Um, so I guess we've, we have asked you some questions already, so we'll try and find the ones that we've not asked you. How have you been? Um, what's new with you? What's been different? Uh, I think the last, so the last time we saw you, obviously you were in Warriors of Waterdeep, and you can watch it on the VODs. Um, but also you, you streamed the one shot, was it the Cider House Rules? The yeah. Wizards of Oz one shot. That was yeah, a lot so of fun. Much fun. That was a really good laugh. Yeah, we had, we had a lot of fun doing that. Um, yeah, playing in the Wizard of Oz universe was metal. Yeah. I don't, well, I don't know how much of a fan of Wizard of Oz you are. I am the most casual fan there is and I felt like I was really I got like this really cool opportunity to do something that I've never have considered before and then yeah. being able to do that was just like yeah it was really good it made me appreciate a lot more I actually bought a new well I was, I'm just gonna grab it quickly because sure. this is cool okay I don't know whether this is gonna go on long enough charity oh. shop. I don't know how well you can hear wait Ugh. it's in a charity shop after recording and I was uh -huh. like oh, look at this bad boy hey. like super really and, and it's got like it's the original story and it's got all these like lovely Amazing. little draw where are the drawings there, there. Oh, the little sketches oh brilliant can you hold it up closer uh, let me see that's cool <laughs> I got just a it's got a lot of words at the oh, bottom. Oh, it's Dorothy think, and she's like... looking over the, the fields of Kansas or something, I think. And they're just, they're just so good. I think, is that not the Scarecrow? Oh, yeah, it's the Scarecrow. I saw, yeah, I saw just, a fence. There's like the, the actual picture of the wizard as well when he's like in his little chair and stuff. It's just so, yeah, it's such a beautiful little book and I've not had time to read it yet, but yeah. Oh, 
it's yeah it's one of those things isn't it you don't try anything new you'll never you'll never pick up books that are cherry shelf <laughs> Exactly. I, I do love The Wizard of Oz. I've never read the book, though. So, uh, yeah, maybe that's something I need to go back and do at some point. But, yeah, I, I really want to have a go at the, the Wizard of Oz game because it just sounds like chaotic, absolute nonsense. And I, I also love the idea of... Um, and they kind of touch upon it in uh, Wicked as well, the musical. This idea of you have the, the chosen girl kind of just storming through... Oz and changing it but you don't really see everyone else's like she is on her adventure we're following Dorothy but uh this feeling of well no this is a this is a huge world with so many other stories and how are all their lives impacted by this one girl and her fancy slippers and everyone seems to be obsessed about and she's just kind of swanned through and uh you know the the munchkin town gets uh, gets attacked and the the city of oz also gets attacked by the flying monkeys and all of these people have lives is that um the space janitors idea right of like who cleans up after the death star i love yeah there i have to say i 100 percent recommend reading the source book because as as much like fun as i had just being wacky playing all these like different barrels and <laughs> barrels of cider and, and botting people around <laughs> and watching the players just be absolutely creative and mental. Um, the real, I think the real inspiration for writing when when I was, because uh, like I, you know, it's, I can't help but, but put my pinky in a little bit and, and mix it about a little. Um, DMs put a bit of my, yeah, exactly. And, you know, the the story, the one shot story had like, you know, this this idea of the, of the well, spoilers for anyone who hasn't watched it yet. Um, a warlock kind of running everything and they never gave you a patron so i just sort of like started to be like oh well what else is going in us because you've got all these different things and there's this wonderful wonderful like good good few paragraphs of like explaining how oz becomes oz and they've really set it for like a dnd campaign um that you could fully run like 100 yeah. percent. it's it's one of those like if not, if not going to put it in your own campaign, it's definitely going to inspire you to like write some really cool stuff yeah. um, with their source material. And and there's so much good stuff to use out of it, like the animated object stuff. I'm definitely going to be picking out and using again. That is very cool. And it, it, do they also talk about the the original characters from the Wizard of Oz? Are they because yeah. they are there as kind of background characters? Are they ones that could turn up? 100%. Yeah, it's kind of set after Dorothy leaves. Mm-hmm. Um, if I if I remember correctly, I could be wrong. I could be wrong about a lot of things. But uh, <laughs> they um, they yeah they have three character sheet like uh, NPC monster sheets for um for the Tin Man, the Lion, and the Scarecrow. Nice. Um, which is really cool, and they've got like little bits of like character like. We'll go this way I'll go that way and like what they're now doing now that Dorothy's left and stuff That's it's really cool. yeah it, it, I think it's for someone someone who like really loves the material and probably like I know that anything that I love you you instantly like think well what happened next or like you know oh, well you know what if, what if my character was in there mm-hmm. it's a wonderful chance to do that with, with the Wizard of Oz and the cover art is so cool yes. it, 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 part of me does want to like just kind of go whole ham fisted into this like cool steampunk like mm-hmm. tattooed Dorothy like nice. <laughs> she's she's back but she's a little older now yes. <laughs> like I don't know it's like that Alice in Wonderland game they made where you just oh. kill everything <laughs> American McGee's Alice is one of my yeah favorite games from my childhood growing up to the to the point of um my stepdad used to work for EA and he managed to get for my mum one of the limited edition fiberglass models of the Cheshire Cat with all the tattoos and the big dark grey. It was so that cool. is That is pretty damn cool. I know a few people who are super, super gentle about that. That yeah. is damn cool, man. I love that game. Anyway, um, we're here to roll some dice. Or a die. Grammar. <laughs> Just yeah. be gone. The, uh, so let, let's, let's do that. Let's ask some of the formal questions that we're supposed to ask. Let's, let's do it. I like a little bit of a catch up, you never know. (laughs) Number seven. So that means I'm going to put on my best David Shears impression. So now that means I ask you this and only this. Is there a moment in a TTRPG that impacted your life out of game? Ooh. 
Uh, that is a good question. I'm trying to think, really. Um, or I guess the fl- the the kind of yeah. uh, adjacent question is um, not necessarily a moment in a game, but how have how has playing TTRB RPGs impacted? Oh life? well, I mean. Ma- massively so, massively so. In that case, because I, I literally started playing with like some mates from school. That you know, when you're in school, you've got like loads of different sort of friendship groups you can jump from. And um, one of our one of our really good friends introduced. He used to play D and D with his brothers, and then you know, just playing with him for one, I started DMing, and then my friends started DMing and then like, it was just like a massive carry on. And like that ability to sort of bring that wonderful creativeness to all your different friends. It's, insp- it's inspired a lot. I mean, I, I you know, spent so much time writing. Some of my friends spend so much time writing. And it's all that creative juice to the point where you sort of turn it around to each other and you say like, maybe we should just record this because like, this is gold, right? This, this is some fantastic stuff. And you know things like that really turn it around. We we have like our homebrew world created by one of our friends, um, Mike actually, who played in the Wizard of Oz. Mm. He uh, he created this homebrew world, and it it genuinely it was so. We were walking and I'd had the worst day, and it's always like during those that you that you probably talk the most shit. But <laughs> he just, I, I, I was living in London at the time and I'm from up north and all my friends live up north. Not all my friends, you know, who live down south. But um, we were, I, I'd come back for like a few, a few days, maybe a week to come visit everyone. And I'd had the worst day and we just went walking in, in Round A Park in Leeds. And we, we must have been walking in the rain and the mud and just like, talking about this world that he'd just come up with and it was just fantastic it was no, i'd not heard anything like it before and he's got a wonderful he's got a wonderful brain for these kinds of things where he just comes up with something so amazing that you just forget all your troubles mm. you know what i mean and then he, he you know we've got that kind of friendship where when one of us comes up with an idea we will call the other one up and be like hey well, you know just just you know i'm throwing some shit at a wall what's sticking and we'll be like, oh, that definitely stuck. You know, I love that and I love this. And we will we'll plan together and start just building this world. And then I was gutted because I had to go home. <laughs> I had to go back to London. Oh. And I was just like, I don't want to, I don't want to go back to London. I want to play in this world that you've created. And then uh, thankfully, I actually got the opportunity to be there when they first did it. So it was really, it was really fun. And we're looking, you know, we got some stuff on the horizon in terms of work of like actually producing that and making it something Amazing. to share because we think it's an original campaign setting um, that's not like anything that's out there. Hopefully, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, do it. Definitely. See, <laughs> like, I'm sure we will shout about it. That's it yeah. Happens. That's probably the biggest like life decision. How 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 it's changed your life in the terms yeah. of like actually sharing what you do for fun. Do you know what yeah. I mean? Like, obviously, this is, you know, we have fun and it's, but it's, it's you know, it's the platform. The platform is for people to watch and for people to enjoy. And I'm very happy to do that. I feel very privileged. I'm not going to lie. Like, and getting to play D&D for people is pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Um, but, but to bring something that you and your friends have invested so much time, like, yeah, you know, like years yeah. of, and like, some of them, some of some of the stuff we've we've. This isn't like one campaign in this world. We've got currently, I think three, and nice. more on the horizon. Like we t- literally talk about this this specific setting a lot. Yeah, and to to think that we're gonna bring that for everyone. You know, the the potential of that being like something to share is very very spicy and very nice, but. That's yeah. so cool. You got time, got time. I love that. Um, so, and, and this is, I, I'm not making an assumption about what Mike does when, when he's not rolling dice, but I love <laughs> that TTRPGs 
also give a platform uh, of creativity for people who don't necessarily consider themselves to be writers as well. Like I, I, I am a terrible writer. It, I, in the like, I, I write good words, but I physically find that pain, uh, that process painful. Yeah. Of sitting down and focusing and putting pen to paper, but um, I've. I've done a, the tiniest mention of DMing, and not for D and D because I still find the system a bit too much. But um, but I enjoy that um, that process of like, oh, okay, I, I, building the world, building the concepts, and then and then fleshing it out with the players. Um, and I, you know, I, a lot of my family members play as well. Hey. My brothers, who are very my I. I I have triplets for siblings, which is a conversation that uh, can go on for much longer. So I will keep this brief. This is about <laughs> mainly you, but... with my therapist. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but but they all play D and D as well. And the sister, she is a writer. But the um, the two boys are very like maths and and technology focused. Um, but they love it, and they both DM, and that it's that platform for creativity for people who don't necessarily get to do that as their job. And yeah. obviously, like we are actors. And there's a lot of actors that do play D and D because because it kind of blends so nicely. But uh, but yeah, I, I love that about about TTRPGs in general that it gives everyone a platform. To... It's bringing out the, it really brings out the best in people. Um, and and I think when they're able to do like homebrew stuff, you've got from from experience of of doing another another recently I got hired to to play weekly. D&D with a, with a group at a bar, which has been pretty cool as well, actually. Uh, but we're running out of the abyss. So running a campaign source book, I've, this is my second one I've run. I've run Curse of Strahd, where I killed all my players and then um, turned one of them into a vampire, killed the rest, you know how it goes. Um, whereas out of the abyss, I've only killed two of them. And... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, that's five, you know. Is that part of your, your goals when you're setting out as a DM? No, like, checklist, no. Um, funnily enough, funnily enough, Mike is the one that I've killed both times. Both I ran Castle of Strahd and Mike, he, he died. I ran out the abyss and Mike decided he was going to join us at the bar and he died. And, and he knows. I'm amazed that he risked joining you for for cider horse i think cider he, house. i think he does it on purpose i think he knows i think he knows that um i hate it so he like put purposely puts himself <laughs> in situation all right just just we're just gonna we're just gonna i'm gonna pitch you this moment right you're a level two character yeah right you've you've arrived to this town right and then and it's next to a lake and by the lake the Prince of Demons, the Demagogue in itself, spoilers for Out of the Abyss, comes out of the water and starts smashing everything, right? Right. First instinct is? Uh, oh, well, I'm assuming that he ran over and started stabbing. No, no he made a bit of a runaway. Okay. But then, then when, like, you know, the tentacles were slamming down and they were taking, like, you know, debris and, and damage from, you know, just general chaos, he decided it'd be a great idea to turn around and whip it. Right. So I said to him, okay, roll. He rolled a 19. Mm -hmm. The the Demagogon's AC is a 23, if, if I'm saying that correctly. You know, I'm sure somebody will correct me. So he missed. But but it's massive, right? Yeah. Like the it's I think it's a huge creature. So it's its tentacle must be at least like like half of uh, uh you know i'm five eleven must be at least half the height of my body so i was like how do you feasibly miss that well you don't you hit it but you just didn't hurt it and he was like right uh have i got his attention i was like, I was like oh, you know no. it's that kind of thing and i was like i was like all right we'll say it's a 35 percent chance i feel like that's fair 35% chance that you've you've seen that it, it notices you. And you rolled a 25 and it was just like, well, you're dead, aren't you? <laughs> like, I've got nothing for you. It just it picked him up and threw him oh. and killed, killed his character. And I was just like, there was no way, there was just no feasible way he could have taken a single attack from it and not yeah. died. And it's just like, it was painful. It was just heartbreak. I hate 
character death. Like, because I think, I think my my DMing style is always is always to want the characters to feel like they're they're going to you know it's going to be hard but they're going to push through it and I, I get quite pleasantly happy when I feel like why aren't the monsters I'm I've got killing them like I quite like that feeling and I do like to play up to that like um, you know why won't you die <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Skyrim NPC kind of thing because it's it's fun isn't it it's that fun facade of the DMs trying to kill you and I'm really not I'm just trying to make a bit of a challenge. Yeah. And then and then when it actually comes to doing it, it, it just it just catches me off guard. Because I love the characters people make. So so losing them is almost as painful to me as as anything else. But then then, you know, it does it does say a lot to the players that I play with that when they do die, they do die in the most epic ways. Yeah. And I think like, that, you know, that's that's important. Make sure it's flashy. Yeah, getting thrown halfway across the dark lake into a stalagmite by the prince of demons is is pretty cool i guess that's something as well as a i mean we we always have session zeros to make sure everyone's kind of on the same page with uh with style and content and that kind of thing but i suppose that's something that i'd not i i've personally not been in a group with someone who was like I don't care. I'll just run and kill myself, and then I'll make a new character, and that's all, or whatever, and rejoin as them, and, and that's fine. But I guess as a, a DM, that's just about for you. I, I, yeah, just kind of marrying those expectations together. Like if he's keen to throw, not throw the character away, but he loved he loved Veldrin uh, Welderin. Yeah, <laughs> and and it was like it but, was but no preservation instinct whatsoever. He he. Mike understands because Mike's cursed um, to die every second session, and right, it okay. was, I was gonna, in it real was life, the, genuinely cursed. Yeah, yeah, he, he's cursed. Um, any character he makes dies in the second session. Um, whether or not it's a permadeath is is I think it's uh, three for five maybe. Um, but he genuinely he's used to it now. He's just kind of like, yeah, I. Uh, should have seen this one coming. Like, I don't, it's it's weird. As soon as he makes it past that second session, he's fine. He's like completely like it's that second session. I think it's that that kind of you know getting into the groove of things and like you know testing out how the play works and then you know making silly decisions like whipping the demagogue. And <laughs> Fair enough. That's, cool. that's yeah. Should we, uh, should we see what other questions the dice throws up? Let's baba booty. Let's see it. Roll that dice. Woo! <laughs> oh, stick them in low numbers. Oh. That's a number five. How, now do you feel about cosplay? Oh, it's epic. I'm not going to lie. Ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted to be a superhero. <laughs> um, I... Call, yeah, cute, cool music. Uh, <laughs> I yeah I was I was recently saying this to somebody. The reason I became an actor was because I wanted to be a Power Ranger. Um, Which one? Any of them. Any. Of I'd have literally I'd have been any. I used to watch Power Rangers nonstop. I think I've watched I watched all of them until I got like too old to actually sit down and watch them again. Like because because it just started getting it started getting like in my opinion, the costumes weren't cool anymore. <laughs> right. So they like, were all like the height of cool. Yes, Nat, and fuck you <laughs> with the sarcasm. <laughs> I, oh, look, I love, very little judgment I love here. what Dan Moore is doing with the comic books, okay? He's bringing it back in a cool way. He's made everything, sorry. But there, there you go, just a sprinkling of extra, extra nerddom for you there. I even know the name of the eyes who draws uh, the yeah. Power Ranger comics. Uh, I need to read them as well, actually, because um, the art's beautiful and Dan Moira is, if I'm pronouncing that right, Moira, maybe. It's just, uh, he's doing a lot of Batman stuff at the moment. Sorry, tangent again. No. Um, but es essentially, I I always wanted to be a superhero and like being a, being an actor was like the next best thing, really. Um, it's probably why, you know, I like my players to feel like they're superheroes because that's, for me, the dream. So surely that's everyone's dream, right? Um, 
So we all ex- we all we all experience the same things, right? Um, but, the superhero um, inside you. Exactly. I'm just bringing up that you know the super the super people uh, within my players. But um, when I when I was a kid, I always wanted like I always wanted to have like that birthday party where everybody dressed up as superheroes. Never happened. Um, oh, that's sad. I just I just don't think it. I don't. I couldn't tell you why. Couldn't tell you why because I don't know. Um, but like I remember, I used to go to like a summer school because my mum worked through the through the summer, um, and and like I remember not being able to make one of the days and being like heartbroken because it was fancy dress day and I was going to dress up as a super villain or a superhero and like you know that 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 for me was like the worst moment in my life as a kid and then. Gutted. And then, like, you know, when I could dress up, I'd do, like, all sorts of the crazy ones that you wouldn't consider, like, Two-Face. Mm-hmm. Like, and I, I, and I did all the hair. Like, I got hairspray and stuck up, like, half my nice. hair and, and like, did all the makeup and then walked around like that or something. And I was like, oh, I was talking to people, like, yeah, I'm Two-Face. Um, and, yeah, I, you know, I just love it. I love, I love the idea of dressing up. And then as I got older, I was kind of, like, you know, got more into musicals because you're an actor, so you get, you know, then you start dressing up as Mormons and stuff like that. And literally going out and finding the Book of Mormon as like a prop. It's up there. <laughs> I won't get that one. Amazing. Doesn't deserve the time of day. Uh, <laughs> actually, it does. It's a very fun read. Um, not gonna lie. Um, but yeah, I think I think people who cosplay are just fantastic. And the, the ability to, to do some of the stuff that you see like I remember seeing a juggernaut, like a proper big juggernaut, like Deadpool two size, but classic K Marco, and just being like, that is so damn cool. And like, I think I think another part of it that I think kind of gets underappreciated is the amount of like athleticism that actually goes into making your body look like these comic book ideas which are which are let's be honest unrealistic Ridiculous. like completely and then when and some comic book artists have never seen a woman in their life uh very clearly so yeah yeah yep. you know i think some of them were born like not even a virgin birth but a motherless birth i don't know how that would work but they've very clearly never met a woman yep. um Oh no, but well, I mean, to be fair, we do have that secret ability to twist our bodies. So you can see both the boobs and the butt at the same time, both facing forwards. But we, yeah, we just, we just keep it hidden um, for for the people just, that really just, earn it. Yeah, like a bendy ruler spine. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? It's just, I, I, I've never seen it. Never been, never been so lucky. Never, been never special earned enough. Right. Yeah, yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Sorry. Maybe, maybe Harry Potter does have something more than I do. <laughs> Um, but yeah I think I genuinely that you know I think if I could cosplay as anyone yes be, that was going to be my follow up uh, Doctor Doom like I'd love nice. to do like a proper Doctor Doom app because just I've I've drawn and designed countless countless superhero costumes and stuff but I I don't know I feel like I don't really know what my head shape looks like with a mask on because I've never worn a mask so you know, maybe Spider-Man, but Spider-Man's my favourite. Just, just letting you know. Um, but Doctor Doom, Doctor Doom would be so much fun, and being able to walk around and being Doctor Doom, it's 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 a bit of a dream for me. I'm not gonna lie. I'd love to play Doctor Doom just in anything. I'd do it. Yeah. I'd just, I'd yeah. He's he's my favourite supervillain by far, and because I don't think he's a bad guy. That's what I like about. But he's got his own. I don't, Back um, on things. Yeah. I think, well, Ed, Ed Brubaker's Books of Doom is such a wonderful read and it's got like such a wonderful like way of talking about Doctor Doom and his like, his narcissism and also his like heartbreak and like there's some horrific, I mean, Ed Brubaker's amazing. Anyway, 100% recommend anything by Ed. But, um, but that 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 series just shines a completely different light on Doom in a really clever way. Mm-hmm. Um, it introduces like all the things that came before and like ties them in really nicely. The art's really good. Uh, it's this nice sort of like f- 
faux realistic comic book art, very similar to who he's working for. It? Um, it's Ed Brubaker and... Ah, oh, it's going to kill me because he's one of my favourite artists and I can't remember. I'm looking at a book right now. Ah, oh, God, Sean Phillips. Sean Phillips, an amazing British artist. Um, at least I think he's British. I know he lives in England. But, um, or maybe Wales. Anyway, getting off topic. Um, no, not at all. Well, I was going to follow that up with saying, like, in terms of you've always wanted to play Doctor Doom or you cosplay as Doctor Doom. One of the things I love about going to conventions and seeing cosplayers is the fact that everyone is kind of semi in character and does have these little playful yeah. skits with each other, just kind of in the middle of a convention floor, and that's it's just joyful. Like everyone nerding out together and posing. I love. Uh, yeah, I've never been to one. I've never again. <laughs> never had that experience. No. Oh. But... Yeah. Well, when the plague is over, because it will happen, one day conventions will help. You'll have to have to head along to one of the comic cons. Yeah, I feel like I might not have the money to do Doom, but I've certainly got the body and facial hair to do Wolverine. Yeah. <laughs> I could, I could definitely grow those mutton chops. What about have you? So have you have you have you cosplayed? So cosplay is something that I would absolutely do if I had more time and money. Um, but uh, I, go, I have yeah. done it yeah. once. And I went as the TARDIS. Ah, Made myself a little good. blue slip dress and a little hat that flashed. Uh, um, yeah. That's beautiful. See, that's that's stuff that, that really sums up cosplay as well. Because you get all the cool stuff and then you get some really <laughs> fucking clever shit. I love it. Yeah. I just love it. Yeah. I no, feel I feel sad it. that I didn't go to um like the next convention after Untitled Goose Game was released because I would I just feel like there would have been absolute carnage of people going around <laughs> as geese. And that would have been very entertaining. <laughs> there could never have been peace and they were like burn knives in the mouth yeah. and stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna I flip it. it slightly. If you could cosplay as any of your characters in D&D, who would you cosplay as? Oh, my first character is just me with two swords and being medieval. <laughs> I've actually finally grown out my hair long enough to look like my character. My, uh, yeah, my character literally looks like this, but maybe maybe a little bit longer hair, always tied up. Though recently had it cut off whilst he was in a coma because his soul was lost to a deck of many things. Um, right. I was going to say. I was going to ask. Was this? Um, I completely forgotten the name of your character from Sea of Swords Forsaken. Was it him or oh, was it Anton? An off, Anton. Or are you talking about uh, an off-air home game character? Your very. This first... was like yeah. This was like my very very first character. Because like you can you say what you want, right? I, whoever whoever's out there saying that their very first character wasn't basically them <laughs> is lying to you, or not. You know, not human. It's one of the two. <laughs> they're either not human, uh, you know, there's something special and, and, and be around them if you can, or they're a liar. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, my yeah, my very first character that yeah, literally it'd be the easiest one to cosplay as a but I would love to cosplay as like a Leonin or something like that. Like a giant can you imagine like just walking around as a giant Amazing. lion person yeah. and, and you know, or tall. Yeah, it's so cool. Like a slow tin teenage mutant ninja turtle. That's amazing. I feel but, like yeah. all. Maybe, I think it's maybe it's just all turtles I've encountered have been old people, but they just have very strong old person energy, and I love that. They literally live for fifty years. That's what I love about them. They 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 literally die quite quite a lot soon. They have such a cool like. They apparently, this is what a new player who's playing a total told me. They told me all about this. Um, they literally like grow up, their parents sort of look after them, and then they're sort of sent off to learn about life. And they've just constantly on the move, adventuring. They're like the natural life of an adventurer is a total. And, and it's just like, then they die. <laughs> this is like, amazing. Amazing. Absolutely fantastic. But yeah, they, that would be cool. I'm just trying to think of like, because Anton's pretty cool, to be fair. Mm -hmm. And that was like a cool, I, I really enjoyed the design I came up with for Anton. Bard is such a badass design as well with the tattoos. He is. Um, You're close like with I'm the hair as well, that, just though. like, oh, have a shave. Yeah, yeah. Like, get your undercut. Um, I'm trying to think, what was my last, last character that I played? Oh, I've been DMing. That's why I think. Yeah, but it's Naomi. Then. Naomi was probably again, again, yeah. 
just the wrong gender for it, unfortunately. Sucks carrying all these wonderful strong women. <laughs> you can you can crossplay. I could, I could crossplay, but I also feel like I also feel like I, you know, I'm I'm very I well man, I'm actually quite pretty. Maybe I could pull it off. I'll see, I'll see. I have to shave. I've not shaved for so long, that's the issue. Right. But now Emily's got like some nasty scars. Yeah, I mean, get all that on. I so you're going to join Anna it, and yeah. I. You're going to join Anna and I in having little nods to the to the character. Oh, what, you, oh, what for uh, recording, do you mean? Like, Anna's got the wig, I've got the sideburns. You get your little skull cap. Get a little skull, yeah, little skull cap. Maybe some like big braids, some blonde hair. <laughs> I, got, I feel like I could find like a blonde wig somewhere. I don't know. I'm, you know, I already carry a knife. Right, of course. Yeah, so. Standard. Don't need Standard behavior. That. Yeah. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep that up a lot. I'm terrible. I'm terrible. I just I find myself too funny. That's the real issue. <laughs> yeah. I've been witness to too many of your jokes to, uh, yeah, exactly. to try and smooth that over and say, no, it's fine. You are funny now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to roll the dice. Yeah, I think it's best. <laughs> before I before I leave us with a wonderful joke that takes fifty minutes to tell. Oh my god, they are a nightmare. Okay, so that was number twelve, which is why are TTRPGs important to you? But I kind of feel like we've sort of covered that, unless you have anything new to bring to that specific line of questioning. Uh, I think actually the only thing that I I could actually comment on about it actually being important. And I think it actually reflects really massively in in what's becoming pop culture. Um, at the moment, things like D&D are actually like swarming. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and more yeah. amazing. Um, you know, all these kind of like, these nerdy pop culture things that, you know, in the 70s and 80s, you were seen as like a loser because you're in your mom's basement playing, you know, D&D and stuff like that. It's becoming more of an actual understanded kind of concept and I think it's just I think what it really brings out of people is just play I think it's one of those reasons why mm -hmm. you know drama is actually an important class in, in schools and why yep. art is actually an important class in stop school stop cutting arts funding stop cutting arts funding you know I just yeah I think people don't really understand that until they're able to express themselves properly without fear you know and, and, you know, not saying that people who play D&D are, like, fearless, but there is a certain level that comes with playing with people with D&D, I think you will notice, if you do get into it, that there is a fearlessness, that there is there is someone who will who will be really shy, uh, maybe not make much eye contact, but then when they're playing the game, they're, like, getting up and screaming, you know, and, and 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 saying catchphrases and things like that and then they pick up their books and leave i yeah. found that from playing because because i think i think i've been very um i think americans kind of get this a little bit more i don't know about british people my experience has been always at home with friends you know and then meeting everybody was literally like you you're welcomed into this you know a community of of you know players that are playing for a reason you know we've all been picked and cast in certain roles and you know it's kind of like we're working as more of like a, a cast and team of creative actors but being able to just go to a bar and be like i have no idea who's going to turn up um, is is been wonderful and i've done like a few cover shifts as well i did a cover yeah. shift for someone and met like a completely different group to the group i've been working with where one of them, you know, knew the rules back to front. Like I, I just described a monster. He knew what it was. He just right. knew, and it it was like a mortal kind of of foes that maybe I, you know I had I barely heard of myself. And it's like the wretched and the lost, and they're these like creatures that like develop from negative emotions. He knew that. He knew everything about it. And whilst he had that like level of like in, like accurate detail, and like. You know, he wasn't flexing, he wasn't like bragging or anything like that. He just knew. He really mm. kept it to himself. And it was after the games and after we killed the monster, he went, oh, that was a thing. It was like, yeah, yeah, it was, man. <laughs> like, cool. Yeah. <laughs> That's that. like, yeah. And then and then playing with like completely new play. I've got one player called David who will squeal the fact that I've even said his name um, just with excitement on, on line. 
He hello, is, David. Hello, David. I hope you're listening. Um, he is one of the best players I've ever played with. My like, hands down, first met him, and he told me he just, you know, he just started, you know, coming out again because you know, obviously, I've been coming out of lockdown. And he just wanted to, you know, play games and have fun. And the bar I work at, it's like a weekly subscription. And you can play as many nights as you could make. Mm-hmm. And he was like, I'm playing all of them. Aww. Like anyone that, that, that there's space in, I want yeah. to play in. And he just loves it. And he, you can tell that. And he is, and that, that kind of like, you don't get to meet that kind of person and they don't get to have that kind of fun in any other kind of like, game even you know when i play football and stuff like that but the, the kind of sportsmanship that comes into D D that i've never seen in anything else before he literally is i think by far is my favorite moment i've ever played ever they all made a role to see if they could learn something and it, and they all failed and i just went well you know just in case you want to know because david is like oh you know maybe what, what is that just for me to know not as a character but as a player you know just to you know expand the knowledge and I was like, you know, if anybody wants to know, because they want to know as a player, and he just went, no, we didn't roll for it, so we do not deserve to know. <laughs> <laughs> and he was stood up and everything, and it was just like, ah, oh, you know what I mean? You can't, you can't. And, you know, he's always generous, and they're all so generous as players and give each other so much time to speak. And, and it really creates those kind of life skills that I don't think you get. You don't get that. You don't get those life skills in in like you know other things and i think a lot of team team sports and team things like that really bring people together and i'm really i'm really grateful for for being able to join in with this kind of you know ttrpgs and and finding out that there's more and always playing more and new rules and keeping that sort of like plasticity to to being flexible and doing new things i started on 3.5 so moving over to fifth was a bit of a, a bit of a change for me and yeah it just it's just it it is important because it brings out so much good in people so you know and it might not be for everyone do you know what i mean we've got mm. we've got friends that are like no no you can't get me to play i'd rather die and it's like that's cool that's cool but i i genuinely believe that if we were taught at a younger age it was okay to take up space and it was okay to be part of a team and a part of a community that's yeah that it would it would have created a whole bunch of different people and i'm very i'm very not not uh what's the word what's the word for like happy i'm happy for the next generation that will be growing into this yeah. acceptance of being able to play these games Go, going into youth theater and telling them that i i i do D and D as a living. They're like, Where? what do you play? What do you know? And it's like, whoa, okay, cool. Yeah. This is awesome. Do you know what I mean? That's oh, that was so a lovely. thing. Yeah. Yeah, I think I a sidebar with a little story of my own. Um, I have gaming family. Apart from um, my mum, who I found out recently, when she was at uni, uh, a group tried to get her to play D and D, and she was excited about it. She's she's arty, she's drama as well. She was my drama teacher at school. Um, <laughs> Apple does not fall far from the tree, uh, but. I, I thought it was so sad that I think at the time it must have been like very, very early iterations of D&D and she was excited to play it, but then everyone just got very number crunchy and mathsy and no, you can't do that. You can't do that. And that has completely put her off. Mm. Um, but I strongly believe that there is a TTRPG out there for everyone. It's not a matter of I don't play them. It's a matter of someone needs to help you find the right one because there's so many that are basically drama games as well um and that obviously that is something that she would be fine with um so yeah for for those people that aren't sure if D D is right for them it might not be but there's so many others out there 100 percent, and it's it sounds like it sounds like just classic gatekeeping where somebody thinks yeah. there's only one way to play this game like yeah there's not there's not if you yeah. have if you have people that want to put you know crunch the numbers crunch the numbers man but if yeah. somebody doesn't want to do it why are you making it like it's cool like it's just cool not yeah. everything has to be done a certain way and, and it's a shit yeah I, it sucks that yeah that was your mom's first experience but hopefully 
point. Hopefully, I'm, I'm going to work on her. She's not yeah. going to watch this, so it's fine. <laughs> <laughs> she that. won't see it come in. <laughs> It'll be a surprise. But uh, but gotcha. yeah, I think that that plays into your um your statement about um it, being excited about the next generation, like having so much access to people a- across age groups as well, enthusing about it and talking about it as a normal thing, like instead of identifying as. I suppose I would identify as a nerd and that means I'm going to be the quiet one that gets bullied at school. Yeah. It's a, n- no. you can be a nerd and many other things as well. Like it just means you're excited about something. Um, exactly. And there's loads of people that have shown us that you can be like any kind of nerd, you know what I mean? With like Joe Manganiello being like one of the most beautiful men in the yeah. world, also being like the biggest nerd. It's kind of like, there you go, do you know what I mean? Like you can be you, you can express, you can do whatever you want to do. And then on a weekend, we'll play D&D with mates. <laughs> Amazing. I'm going to roll the die again. Roll, roll that the die! die. <laughs> Still sticking with the low numbers. Okay, this is interesting. Number 10. I'd be great at Call of Cthulhu. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> What? I'm already insane, is why. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you just prepared. Yeah. Have you got your tentacles ready? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Still like tentacles. Paris of the Caribbean too. Killed it for me. You said you literally just said that you would be great at Call of Cthulhu, but if you can't deal with tentacles, then I don't know what to tell you. Oh no! All oh, right, no. In real life, I guess. I guess maybe, uh, maybe. I don't know. I don't know if I can handle that level of of, of, of tentacleness. I think. I think. You know what? I would be like initially. I'd be like, the, <laughs> don't want to deal with this. But <laughs> then, there. then like after that first like, uh, I'd I'd get my gun out, <laughs> and I'd be fine. But you know what I mean, as long as there's like a proactive solution, then I'm fine. Sure. But. Okay. So question number 10. What do you like in a DM? As someone who sits both sides of the table. I I I think the number one thing is someone having fun. And like I think my favorite DMs are the ones that are having like like the most fun at the table. Like if a DM's having the most fun at the table, I'm instantly having more fun than I thought I was capable of. Yeah. Because I think that's the energy. Because it's you know you, whatever way you look at it, you know maybe the players lead, maybe the DM leads, maybe the players leads, maybe the DM leads. I genuinely believe the DM sets the tone. Mm-hmm. The DM sets the tone because they have to set the world, and if they are constantly telling you, "Hey, it's okay to have fun because I'm losing my shit over here." I think that's that's beautiful. I think that's that's exactly how you want to be. And then you know they'll you know I think a good DM will be able to hold whatever tone they need to hold for the time. But as long as there's that like even even in the most horrific parts of, of like a story and a moment, if you can still have fun with that as a DM, you're gonna you're gonna just be knocking out of the park. And that's what I love. Also voices. I know that's like a very I've I've kind of that's you don't have to do voices of the DM, but my god, I listened to Dimension 20 for a recommendation recently. Mm-hmm. And I think his name's Brandon Brandon's well, I can't remember his name, but Brandon Wonderful. Um Mr. Wonderful as uh likes to be known. shall forever now be known. <laughs> um does like just these wonderful like he just go he just went like straight into it head hog doing crazy voices and i was just like yes i'm down for this i'm just so yeah. happy that somebody hasn't even even questioned the fact that maybe i'll sound like an idiot they just went yeah. well i guess i will <laughs> it's like right yeah i'm sold i'm down i'm cool Love and that. that's what i mean having fun, having fun. yeah but yeah i guess I it's, think, it's not just yeah. about like like funny voices are, are are fantastic. I I do it for a living, so I'm all pro for that. <laughs> but it is about like as long as you recognise that your your job is is there to tell a story as yeah. well. So even if you don't feel like you can do all of the voices in the world, like knowing that 
the the storytelling aspect of it so having an attitude or a vibe for a character can be enough to evoke that even if you can't change your voice 100 i i've i've got my my like forever dm um he he hasn't he's not an actor he's not a performer he's just you know the most wonderful tone set he doesn't his voice doesn't change in terms of like how you would transform to you know become a different character but my god his mannerism like his like yeah it's just is it's his tone it's like what he's get, what he's sending off like even though he's not an actor he's a wonderful actor <laughs> like he just gives you the right tone and i think that's that's all you need like say you don't need to be all the bells and whistles and all the technical or whatever you want to say but as long as you've got that ability to just let go and enjoy playing with your players yeah you're gonna that's that's the best quality of a dm and i think i think that was what i enjoyed so so goddamn much when i first started playing and they were the you know there was only two people and he was the one that did it the most was just how fantastic everything he did was mm -hmm. like it was just good quality it's just like amazing it was like watching tv but better because it was in your head yeah and uh and your imagination will come up with a million times better things than anything somebody can put on TV. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't. I couldn't think of anything else that I'd ask for a DM is just to enjoy themselves. And I guess yeah, a bit of story, please. Yeah. <laughs> I think yeah. For me, if I was going to be panicky, I I've I've made the mistake of just doing combat heavy sessions and been like, oh shit. <laughs> I even I didn't enjoy that. Um, because there was just no story to it, and I think, yeah, you need a little, you need a little something, a little something, something to just keep everyone going. Yeah. I guess uh, as a sort of follow up to that, and you might have literally just answered it there, but I wonder what the, the kind of the biggest lesson you've learned as someone who DMs yourself, um, other than your oh combat heavy session didn't feel uh, didn't feel as satisfying. Have there been any light bulb moments of? Um, oh, I've just realised I should be doing this. That would make it so much better and then finding it's worked. Prep. Just prep. <laughs> I have to say, the only time, and even that combat heavy session was just due to the fact that the prep that I put in was the wrong kind of prep. I spent hours creating character sheets because I wanted to try out like a PvP system where the character, the players also played the bad guys kind of thing. Mm -hmm. And it was like, you know, everybody gets a chance to just fight each other uh, with the characters they made and then also the bad guys. It was essentially a ripoff of Mortal Kombat. I'm not going to uh, mince. I even I even played the Mortal Kombat theme tune to them. Nice. Uh, it was very fun. Uh, Did, were you also off in the background going, what? Oh yeah, hundred percent. Every time a character killed someone else whilst they're on death saving throws, I'd be like, "Finish him!" How do you kill the character and when they do the <laughs> fatality? So much fun. Um, but yeah, I think I think just the biggest the biggest lesson I've, I've I've I think I always I kind of like had a a nice um, into it because I my my brain works a mile a minute anyway, so I'm usually like a squad billion steps ahead of wherever the story is going usually and i think that's it really that's it as long as you as long as you know the world you're living in it doesn't matter what the players do because you can just come up with it i find i find source book harder to manage than than a homebrew world because within a source book you're like oh, well what consequences does this mean if they go here, you know, and like if they do that, I, I need to read up on, you know, what this character means because, you know, I only read it maybe three times or something, mm -hmm. which is still quite a lot, but it's like doing revision. Whereas yeah. when you've got it in your own head and it's all come from the old cranium, it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> what you said last week does not matter <laughs> what you said this week because you just, you just saw it out. It all meshed together. And, and I think, that the biggest realization I ever had was I don't write the stories the players do. Yeah. Like, and it was a wonderful, and it was during a source book because I I just changed it all. Um, I I did Curse of Strahd and I, I decided that, that Strahd would be 
seen as the good guy and see how see how that played out. He was like foe being this like cursed noble whose you know village had been left to ruin and he needed the players to help him recapture like certain elements and he was going to slowly manipulate them into killing like angels and stuff like that and um so not actually the good guy then no but but he was in all intents and purposes the good guy like unless they rolled a really high insight check on him which is hard because he charms person all the time like he's got that charm ability um he was just gonna and it for me it felt a bit more like a like a doctor doom character like it was a bit like oh well in his eyes i guess he's the good guy isn't he really and i think any any villain like yeah every villain needs to believe that they are doing the right thing apart from your classic like the full-on melodrama (laughs) (laughs) kind of thing yeah yeah the joker just wants to watch the world burn yeah some people by still way um but yeah, it was, yeah, it was good fun. It's good fun changing that up, and it didn't really matter where things went because, you know, had it in, had it in my head what 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 was important or not. But um, but that you know another lesson I learned from that was fucking read the source book before you start doing it because somebody somebody suggested to me, oh no, it'd be fine, just read the chapters as you go. And I was like, okay, I'll try that. It did not go well. Uh, never read the chapters as you go. Fucking read that thing back to front mm-hmm. or. Or improv it, and you know, deal with the consequences later. Maybe. Whatever's whatever's cool with you. I myself like to know what's going on. Yeah. <laughs> I'm one of those, like, oh, well, my point, my point originally was that, like, you know, it doesn't matter what the story you've got is. The players make the story. The players yeah. come in and they make the story, and that's that was the biggest realization out of Strad was, yeah, it was really cool. I had this concept about Strad being a good guy. But what was more interesting wasn't Strahd's story, it was the players. Yeah. That, and it and it became abundantly clear to me um, really quickly because I was sat as a DM going, whoa, cool, bro. You know, when they were saying stuff. I was like, yeah. Went full Keanu. Yeah, bro. Oh well, I don't know if you can tell, but yeah. I'm, 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 I could cosplay John Wick yeah. anytime yeah. soon. Uh, yeah. You're already there. Um, Just get yourself yeah. a leather trench coat. And yeah, ask for it. You could give me a goddamn gun. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm going to stay like this for the rest of the interview now. Sure. And talk Can like you that. also please talk like Keanu for the rest of the interview? Okay. So uh, I love it when the players they they have fun and uh, they they make it a wonderful experience for everyone. <laughs> They're breathtaking. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sorry, it's being brought back to always be. Always, always be my maybe, where he plays somebody's. He plays somebody's like new boyfriend. <laughs> I mean, uh, I've not seen good that film. One, Netflix, check it out. Um, it's called, yeah, one of the best songs in the world that I've ever listened to. Best believe I punched Keanu Reeves. Uh, it's a great song. But uh, yeah, they they just started coming up with these wonderful characters that were just so moving. Like one, they they started off as these paladins of the gauntlet of tear and one of them died straight away again not my fault um they sure. l- literally ran after a vampire by themselves maybe just attract players that are super keen to uh kill themselves, themselves maybe yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was our forever dm we have a, we have a theory that maybe it's because like he's when he's in character creation mode he's like npc mode where he's like man <laughs> <laughs> They're probably gonna die anyway. <laughs> but yeah, he's just he's just brilliant. He's they're all brilliant and they were coming up with the when he died, the other player character really took that on and had like a really wonderful few moments for the rest of the next few sessions. And it it just it inspired me to do all sorts of things like torture him with the fact that that he you know his friend did die. Whisper, I think it was a it was a um, a Tabaxi cleric called Whisper, mm-hmm. and there's like a point in in Strahd where they walk past like a hangman's noose, and you know you're meant to see a character, you're meant to see your own dead body hanging from the noose, and I I just changed it. I was like, well, you just see whispers, and it was stuff like that that made me realise that the players make more story than I do. 
because I would never have come up with that if it wasn't for them being wonderful. And they also pissed off some revenants, and revenants basically come back every time you kill them. And so you put the soul to rest. So they they hopped in their their friends' bodies and <laughs> came back to kill them. <laughs> so stuff like that, you know. What I mean, you can, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I yeah. think, unfortunately, that's all we have time for right now. So we're gonna have to start yeah. wrapping up. Is there? I, I know you're a busy man. Is there anything coming up that you want to chat about that you'd like to plug? Well, there's some really cool stuff that we're going to be doing with Roll Together soon. Um, I know people really what enjoyed. What can you tell us? Well, um, people really enjoyed Escape from Carceri, Um and I'm very keen that everything I DM for Roll Together kind of links somehow. Um, so we will be exploring something that was kind of hinted at during uh, the wrap-up season finale of Escape from Carceri. We will be. Uh, the new show will be called Into the Wastelands, um, The Eternal Army. So if some of you don't know what that Eternal Army is or is in reference to, um, you'll find out, maybe, <laughs> during this next um, 12 part. They've, they've trusted me with a big a big 12 part, so I'm I'm fully bricking it. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, I think you're going to be amazing. Thank you, thank you. Uh, means a lot. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm very, I'm very excited. I've got a really great cast. Um, we've got um, G coming back from uh, Escape from Carcere. It's a different character. Uh, we have Rebecca, who we worked with for um, uh, Buried. But Mike's going to be joining us as well. For this. this is his like big first big long session. Uh, he's going to be a new character. And we've got Evie, who I've played with in home games, but. Oh no, Evie played Wizard of Oz as well. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's everyone, isn't it? No, no, Hannah as well. We've got another Escape from Carceri person as well. So it's just going to be—it's going to be a lot of like really good fun with some really good players. I'm really excited to see see where it goes. Because, like I said, I don't really write the story; they do. Uh, so let's see. Yeah, we're going to be doing that from September 27th till December 13th. Um, yeah, into the wastelands, the eternal army. We'll see what. Well, yeah, I've, yeah, we'll see what that's about. I'm very, I won't I'm give any excited. spoilers away. No, absolutely. You gotta, gotta watch. <laughs> cool. Well, thank you everyone for joining us and being part of the show. Thank you, Niall. Uh, that was lots of fun. And um, if you enjoyed this chat and you want to see us actually play D and D, we stream. Every, well, we stream this chat every Saturday from six pm till seven pm GMT, and we stream the D and D games on Mondays and Tuesdays. On Mondays and tu- uh, yes, they're, so they're currently all at six pm till nine pm GMT. On Mondays, we're currently streaming Flustered in the Feywild, and then uh, I think it's going to be episode eight. Is, uh, is this coming Monday and then uh, that's going on till episode 12 um, and then we'll be taking over with Niall's, Niall's show and then on Tuesday we're currently streaming Andor and it's the finale this week so do tune into that because it's going to be very exciting uh, all of our shows stream at twitch.tv slash RollTogetherRPG and there's a YouTube link in chat thank you very much mods don't forget you can also enjoy our shows as a podcast so go search for Roll Together RPG on your podcast app once again, huge thanks to our D20 Club on Patreon. You help us do everything we do, and it means so much. Uh, so thank you for all of our sponsors and supporters and uh, putting my David Shears hat on once again to say, stay classy at the table. <laughs>